This latest chapter of Tokyo Ghoul Re, guys, is one of the better chapters we have had in a good while. I was hyped all week ever since the cliffhanger with last week having the return of Rize within Kaneki's mind. I knew we were in for a very deep and very savage conversation between Kaneki and Rize, and it, in all honesty, did not disappoint. I wanted this conversation to go on even longer, maybe even into the next chapter, because I just want more of this dynamic of Rize just roasting Kaneki about all the mistakes he made, and hopefully having this all lead to the point where Kaneki will finally make a change, hopefully for the better, and eventually get out of the Dragon Kagane by Toka, and then just, you know, come to terms with all the stuff he's done and just move forward from it. But that is the main question that this chapter raises. Will Kaneki be able to move past the facts that within the Dragon State, he has killed so many people? Our boy Ken Kaneki has been struggling this entire series in a sea of tragedy and misery. And this conversation right here he's having with Rize is going to help him decide whether or not he should just give up right now and just fall to the bottomless abyss that is this sea of tragedy, or if he should push forward, try to get out of this sea, and eventually strive to get back to Toka, Hinami, and everyone else that he has come to know and love. So this chapter as a whole is definitely going to be the start of the turning point for Ken Kaneki's character, and it really makes you ask the questions, once he is actually freed from the Dragon Kagane, or if he is freed from the Dragon Kagane, what type of personality is Kaneki going to have? How is he going to deal with everything that he has done? That is the main question I am getting by the ending of this chapter as it faded to black, but this conversation he's having with Rize was needed, and I'm really glad that we got the return of Rize in this chapter, so that way she could just tell it like it is to Kaneki in this week's chapter. So I am super excited just to dive just a little bit more into this week's latest chapter, but the first thing I wanna mention before we even talk about the rest of this chapter is the artwork, and specifically about how Kaneki and Rize were drawn in this chapter. They looked absolutely amazing. Kaneki was drawn very, very well, but I gotta give Ishida top props on Rize. Rize looked great in this chapter, and I do know that Ishida does tend to have trouble trying to get Rize looking right in the Tokyo Ghoul Re chapters. I've read that a few times about him, but I gotta say, he did a fantastic job just with Rize in this chapter. She looked phenomenal. Just gotta point that out right up front, but without further ado, guys, let's just talk about this week's latest chapter because I've been saying Rize, Rize, Rize. We have been waiting for Rize to make a return into the story for quite some time, and what better way for Ashida to reintroduce Rize's character and to have her pull a Jesus nonetheless and to walk on the water towards Kaneki as if this is no big deal. That right there is totally awesome. But then we also have that bottom panel on page one, which immediately brought me back to the Jason torture because in this panel, we see Kaneki and Rize locking eyes. And then if you go back to the Jason torture scene, there's one that is strikingly similar that reminds me very heavily of this panel in this recent chapter. And because I used it recently in a review thumbnail. So I'm not sure if this is a callback or not, but this panel in particular definitely brought me back to part one of Tokyo Ghoul when Kaneki first had his inner monologue session, his first therapy session with Rize. <laughs> Rize, but how? Long time no see, Kaneki. And then Kaneki starts telling Rize that he has to get back immediately to help all of his friends because the CCG is currently ambushing the GOAT organization. He starts name dropping a whole bunch of names, but one name in particular is really surprising that I never expected Kaneki to mention. Fuka. Fuka's name actually got brought up by Kaneki, so that right there is really impressive, and I gotta give major props to Fuka, who made such a big impression on Kaneki that he was able to get name dropped within the names of Toka, Hinami, Hirako, Sukiyama, Miza, Naki. That right there is really, really impressive, but as we move forward in that conversation, Rize just belts out this huge laugh, and it's the first of many laughs of hers within this chapter, and she's like, Oh, my dear Kaneki, they are not after your subordinates or your friends. You have it all wrong. They are after you. You are, in fact, the one-eyed ghoul, after all. You are the one-eyed king. 
They are only after you. You are the sole reason why your friends and subordinates are currently being slaughtered. Did you think you could blame it on something else? Coincidence? Tragedy? Fate? <laughs> Sorry, but destiny doesn't exist in this world. It's all just one person's circumstances colliding with another's. And who creates those circumstances? Would you care to guess? It's you, Kaneki. And then Rize ends up asking the question, what did you expect, Kaneki, was going to happen once you returned to the goat base during the ambush? And of course, in typical Kaneki fashion, he replies by stating, well, I wanted to protect everybody. I wanted to regroup, get all of our subordinates in line, and then make a counterattack against the CCG. But then Kaneki ends up retracting a little bit. He goes, no, we shouldn't have attacked then. We should have attacked sooner. We should have beaten the CCG. We should have beaten Furuta. We should have done a surprise attack on the CCG before Furuta even made that plan. We should have gnawed the fangs of the CCG, exhausted all other options for the CCG until they were just coming to the table and willing to talk with us about peace between humans and ghouls. But then this is when the conversation gets very, very interesting because Rize ends up replying to Kaneki by comparing him to a dictator. And I agree with Rize 100% during this section of the chapter because with Kaneki fighting against the CCG, in order to bring about peace between humans and ghouls, both parties have to come to the table willingly. And if Kaneki and the GOAT organization just basically battle and constantly berate the CCG until all other options are exhausted and they forcibly bring him to the table, that's not free will on the human side. Both sides have to come to the table willingly, which kind of makes this very ironic because currently, outside of Dragon, both humans and ghouls have done that. They have come together, they have started talking, and currently, momentarily, we have peace amongst humans and ghouls. So even though Kaneki is very flawed in his ideology and the way that he was kind of going about fighting against Furuta and the CCG, I am really glad that Rize ended up bringing up the topic. It's like, Kaneki, you were just basically going to become a dictator ruling over both humans and ghouls. And if anyone's obstructing that peace, you would basically knock them out then and there. So that right there, that section of the chapter, I found to be very fascinating. But then Kaneki ends up replying back to Rize, basically saying, call me what you will, but if that's what it takes to get things done, then I will become a dictator. But Rize isn't done getting through to Kaneki just yet. So she basically says at that point, well, if my words won't sway you, let me sway you by showing you. And she teleports him out of the water and back into the GOAT underground operations base. And she's like, you are the sole person responsible for your organization crumbling into dust. You think I'm lying? You want proof? Touch my hand. So Kaneki being a little bit perplexed by this, goes to touch Rize's hand. And once he makes contact, we have this awesome, and I mean awesome, double spread page where we have these screams of anger, agony, and anguish just seeping into Kaneki's consciousness. We have phrases of no, why, it's huge, please, I don't wanna die, just being screamed on the page. This page is so cool to see. And this just ends up breaking Kaneki, bringing him down to his knees. Why are you crying? This is your doing. You said you'd rather feel pain yourself than inflict it on others. He realizes that all these screams are coming from humans and ghouls that suffered and got consumed by the dragon Kagane. But then Kaneki remembers he saw people down on the ocean floor and he ends up asking Rize, even though he already knows what the answer is going to be, he still has to ask Rize and he asks Rize, are those people down there? And Rize does not even hesitate. She's like, yep, those are the people you killed. I'm sure you all will have a lot to talk about now. No, this line delivered by Rize right here and all the lines that follow, this is the savagery I was expecting from Rize in this chapter. And the fact that she can deliver that line with that smirk on her face, this is the Rize I know and love. This may not be the real Rize, this is the one inside Kaneki's mind, the fake persona, but this is what I was expecting of Rize to say in this chapter, and it did not disappoint in the slightest. But she does not stop right there from mocking Kaneki, because then she ends up using all of Kaneki's dialogue he has stated from the past up until now, and just rubs it back in his face, where she's saying, protect everyone? 
create a world where humans and ghouls can understand each other. And then we have the, the zoom out shot where she is maniacally laughing in front of Kaneki's face as we're just zooming out through the hallway. And we have this dark silhouette of her where she's like, Kaneki, you want to go back to save them? And she snickers and goes, I hate not being able to do anything. I mean, come on, you make me laugh. And then it goes on to say, it is precisely because you keep doing things that people keep dying. And then we have the snake pattern in the background with the Noro Kagane mouth on Rize. That right there is nightmare fuel, but it's great symbolism on that page. But this line, Deliver Next, encompasses everything that Rize has been trying to get through to Kaneki this entire chapter, where she says, it have been better if you didn't do a damn thing from the beginning. Not a single thing. Nothing. And we just fade to black. The title shows up and it says, this is what you wanted, right? That right there is basically where the chapter ends. But that last piece of dialogue coming from Rize, I find to be very fascinating because it completely contradicts the conversation that Kaneki had with Rize back during the Jason torture because that entire conversation came down to making a choice. You need to make a choice in order to save others. You gotta give up one thing in order to choose and protect another. You've learned the lesson your mother couldn't seem to grasp. That sometimes to protect one thing, you have to have the resolve to let go of another. But yet in this section, it's basically saying, you should have just made the choice to not choose anything. You should have just done nothing from the beginning. Back when Kano first changed you, you should have done nothing. If you continue to make choices, maybe you should have stopped making choices even when I told you to make choices. I find that to be very interesting because this isn't the real Rize talking with him. This is Kaneki's persona taking the form of Rize. So right now, within his subconscious, he is talking himself into basically saying, every decision you have made up until now through your entire life is basically meaningless. You should have just done nothing from the beginning. So that just really goes to show how fractured Kaneki's mind is right now within Dragon. And it makes me very curious to see where Kaneki is going to go moving forward. And once and if he gets dragged out of the Dragon Kagane, what type of personality is gonna have? What type of mindset? Like, are we going to get a new persona of Kaneki, like the one true Kaneki? Or is he going to be more depressed than he ever has been? Because not only does he have to get out of the Dragon Kagane, he also has to come to terms with the fact that he killed thousands of humans and ghouls while transforming into dragons. So I am going to be very curious to see where Kaneki's character is going to go and develop moving forward with this series because it feels like we're coming to an end, but it still feels like we have more development going on with Kaneki's character. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the latest chapter of TG Re, but now I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts. I'm very curious to see if you guys like this chapter. If you didn't, leave your thoughts, theories, and opinions down in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear you guys' overall thoughts. And if you guys want to join in on the fun talking about Tokyo Ghoul, outside of YouTube, feel free to follow me on Twitter, guys. I have a lot of fun tweeting about Tokyo Ghoul with the latest chapter and also just anticipating the latest chapter. So if you guys wanna join in on that fun, feel free to follow me. A link can be found in the description below. But now the wait is back for the next chapter, which we're gonna to have to wait a week for chapter 159. Wow, we're only on chapter 159. That's absolutely crazy. So until next week, when we get chapter 159 of Tokyo Ghoul Re, I'll talk with you guys then. See you later, guys.